Hey there, welcome to Flurn, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. Today we're taking you behind the scenes of our latest photo shoot, Royal Portraits. For our Royal Portrait series, we really wanted to develop a concept that would involve uh, basically bringing together the entire team of Flirn. We have an awesome staff here and we really wanted a chance to show everyone off and kind of like bring everyone together for a photo shoot. And uh, we had the idea to kind of make everyone like old school, like really old school. And uh, so basically as an entire team, we, we threw around a whole lot of ideas, with, like different types of looks and different things we thought might be interesting. And we finally settled on like a, like a Victorian era or like Edwardian era or <laughs> whatever, just a, an older era of uh, portraits to make us look like, you know, we're maybe like 18th century aristocrats or something like that. And everyone was really, really excited about it. So that was like the main purpose in developing a concept for this photo shoot was basically to involve the entire team as well as get something that everyone could be really, really excited about so they could like bring their own unique energy and feel to the images. And uh, they came out awesome. I'm really excited about these images and uh, we're taking you behind the scenes so you can see how the photo shoot went. Um, so after we had our concept, basically we had two goals. We had to figure out where are we gonna get all of our cool props and wardrobe, like what's the shoot itself gonna look like? And then what are the final images gonna look like? So for the shoot itself, we got a bunch of props and we got some wardrobe. We used Broadway costumes as well as Zap props here in Chicago. And they did a great job like outfitting us with all the you know props and wardrobe and everything like that that we needed. And to pull something like this off, I really feel like getting as authentic and as high quality costumes and you know props, things like that is really important because it, it helped get everyone into character. We, we brought all the costuming in here and early in the morning, everyone from the team got into their, you know, got into their outfits. And it was cool because it, it actually like transformed as the day went on, like people were kind of like acting like the characters um, that they were kind of imitating. So I think that that played a huge part in, you know, in the final images because it really did help that, you know, help the characters to like come forth. So that's not an area where I would recommend like skipping steps or trying to like save too much like money or trying to cheap out and things like that. Like get the wardrobe that you want because um, it's going to make a big difference, not just in the final image, but in the people who are actually wearing it, they're going to like wear it a little bit more and interact with that sort of thing. So that's a, a big, big thing we learned on this shoot. So when it came time to do the shoot, we wanted to set up lighting that was going to be relatively broad so people could have an area in which they could actually like move around in and feel comfortable. So we used a lot of large lights and a lot of lights are kind of far away from our subject. So that gave, sometimes when you're doing like a close up portrait, you want lights like right up close to your subject so you can highlight specific areas. In this case, we kind of like backed everything up so it gave the person a little bit more room in which to work. Um, we shot on a seamless backdrop because we pretty much knew from the get go that we were going to make these look like paintings. And and with those, like that painting type of look, um, we weren't going to be photographing on any type of particular background. So we photographed just on a regular seamless backdrop. And in post-production, we actually cut everyone out of those backdrops and then we created our own backdrop backdrops in Photoshop. So um, here in the studio, it was relatively simple. And I would really recommend like, if we had decided in the end to like put these people in you know different scenes, like in front of a castle or something like that, that would have totally worked out as well. So. Being able to photograph someone in the studio and then cut them out is an awesome tool because it just it gives you like an infinite possibility as to what you can do with the characters after you photograph them. In the pro tutorial for the Royal Portraits where we go through and show you guys everything you need to know about Photoshop, taking these from straight out of the camera using textures and backgrounds and everything all the way to the awesome final products, we also include a bonus video which actually goes over step by step each of the lights that we use, why we use the lights and the different power ratios, their placements as well as the 3D lighting diagram. It's just, it's awesome. If you have any questions about lighting, the pro tutorial answers them really, really well. Oh. 
so the day before the photo shoot happened, uh, we were hanging out in the office and a couple of people were like, let's do like a gangster inspired image. And then we were like, well, why don't we just make these images like gangster inspired as well? So um, we actually did, we went out to the prop house and uh, we, we rented like a couple like fake guns and things like that uh, for this photo shoot. And we just kind of decided like, yeah, what would it be like if we made these, you know, like royal portraits with guns? And uh, it, it was a lot of fun, but they wound up just, the vinyl images just look really silly, basically. Like it, it didn't really wind up working. So I'm glad that we, we tried it for, you know, just the fact that like it was fun. And I, I think it's really important whenever you get those like off the wall ideas, things like that, I think it's really important to go ahead and try them. Like don't poo poo those ideas, like actually make them happen. Um, you can shoot and if they don't work out, it's not a big deal. You just don't have to use those images, which is what happened here. But I'm glad we did it instead of just abandoning that idea. So we did a lot of shots with the guns and they're funny, but it, they're not exactly what we wanted for the final product. So um, yeah, it, it was a good time. So the original idea was basically to put everyone in like wigs, you know, those like white wigs that everyone was wearing back then. And we had some wigs on set, but they weren't really working. They didn't fit exactly right and they weren't photographing as well as we wanted to. So uh, we wound up actually completely ditching the wigs and going for looks that were a little bit more natural. And then we had our hairstylist, Jamie, restyle everyone's hair to something that would actually match with these things. So um, there's actually a lot of things changed during this photo shoot, like we changed the fact that you know we took out the guns, we took out the wigs, and uh, we totally changed the look and feel of the lighting halfway through the photo shoot as well. Um, and I would just say that like it, it's a really important to have a solid concept and to, like know what you want to do when you're entering a photo shoot, but also totally be open to change. Like if it's not working out, and you know the people aren't really feeling it, and the images aren't turning out, um, it's it's usually a good idea to just kind of change it up and say, all right, you know what, this isn't working. Let's try something else come together as a team, decide on a new direction and go with that direction. And uh, it, it's always worked out for the better, just kind of like go with the feel of the actual shoot instead of trying to force your idea into, into something that just isn't working. After everything was photographed and everyone's out of their costumes, things like that, now it's time to get into Photoshop. And this is where the real magic happens because a lot of stylization had to go into these images for them to look you know, appropriate for the final. So that's when we bring in things like the frames. We photographed those separately. We brought in using a 3D modeling program. We rendered everyone's names out. We created our own custom backdrops and added textures and all kinds of things like that. So um, photographing everyone was just half of the step. But, Keep in mind, a lot of the times, especially here at Flurn, we build the entire concept knowing what we're gonna do in Photoshop uh, at, even before the whole photo shoot begins. So a lot of people think of Photoshop as like a tool where you kind of take the images that you're kind of okay and you're like, okay, let's fix my kind of okay images. Um, I would really recommend doing the other way around, like use Photoshop as a part of the process. So know, okay, I need to photograph this piece, this piece, this piece, and then we're gonna put them into Photoshop and the final image is gonna look like that. And if you can know what the final image is gonna look like before you even start, it's gonna get you a much, much clearer picture and greater, much better images um, while you're shooting because you know where each of them is gonna go. And uh, basically that's where our pro tutorial picks up. So everything that we photographed here in the studio, we bring together in the pro tutorial. It's two and a half hours long and it uh, basically covers everything you guys need to know as far as Photoshop is concerned on how to build one of these awesome images from straight out the camera all the way to the end. Guys, thanks so much for checking out this behind the scenes of our Royal Portrait photo shoot. The pro tutorial is available right now on flurn.com.